Amen. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to, um, we'll get started. And let me know when you all can see it. I can definitely see it. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at, Sister Davis, you were absolutely right. Chapter four. I got all discombobulated from that trip to Arizona last week. It really threw me off. But uh, we're on chapter four, class four. We're talking about the throne tonight, the throne of God. Amen. Amen. And I went back to my old days where I used to do at Dalton. Yolanda probably can remember when I used to teach Bible Sunday schools there in Bible study. I will always um, add pictures to the presentation mm -hmm. because, um, especially in this chapter, um, the visualization really helps you get an idea. You I know? still have those pictures and, and presentation points. Amen. Amen. And cause people are visual. People are more, we're visual. Most people are visual learners. There's three ways mm -hmm. you can learn visually, um, kinesthetic, and um, I forget the other word. Kinesthetics by touching. And, um, and the other one is um, listening, listening, touching, and, vi and visualizing. Most people learn by touching and by seeing, right? You got to do it to really learn it. Um, only 10% of learning comes from actually teaching. You have, that's why you have to apply it. So mm -hmm. you touch it, then you really get to understand how to do something. So tonight we're going to be talking about throne, the throne of God. So as we've done, I, I broke it down just a little bit different this time, um, but I'm going to need um, some Bible readers. Amen. Amen. Um, so we're going to go in, we're going to read the entire chapter four, then we'll go back and break it down line by line. Okay. Okay. And we're talking about the throne of God. So before we go into the throne of God, let's look at last week's, um, we talked about the seven churches, the last two classes, um, the church of Ephesus, they lost their first love. They became religious, very anointed, but God had something against them because they lost their first love. Um, the church of Smyrna, they had trials and poverty, but they had negative confessions. Mm. God had something against them. Then we look at the church of Pergamos. It was located, they call it the very heart of, of Satan and Satan's throne. And they permitted false teachings and God had a problem with them. Then we look at the church of Thyatira. They permitted the false prophet Jezebel, um, that spirit to come in and allow um, spiritual fornication within a church would cause many people to stumble. God had a problem with them. Then we looked at the church of Sardis. They were just spiritually dead, spiritually dead. God had a problem with them. But then we have Philadelphia. Their source was the word. Christ was the center of their church, and they were very successful. He said, you may be small in numbers, but you're mighty in spirit. Mm -hmm. God didn't have a problem with Philadelphia. Then we got the church of Laodicea, and many theologians think that we are in that age of many churches fall under the Laodicean. The lukewarm church, extremely materialistic, but they're spiritually dead. They have all these earthly riches, but they are spiritually dead. And God has a problem with them. And all the other six churches that God had a problem with, he, off, he gave them an opportunity to repent or have their lights put out. Amen. So clearly... <laughs> We want to be like the church of Philadelphia. Okay. God said he'll add to the church as he sees fit. You know, and as we grow, we got to make sure that we grow and that we keep Christ as the center of our ministry. Amen. The Bible Amen. says, he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I, I will draw all men unto me. me. Amen. Amen. Seven churches. So let's get into Revelation chapter four and we'll start with readers. I have someone read this first um, slide here and then we'll go in and we'll come back and we'll go line by line. So starting at verse one. After this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were 
of a trumpet talking with me, which says, come up hither and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper mm. and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne and sight light unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and 20 seats. And upon the seats, I saw four and 20 elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of god amen verse six through ten someone else another reader and before the throne, there was a seat of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes with them, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord of God, Almighty, mm. which was in is and is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, mm -hmm. the four, the four and elder, 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. And worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast a crown before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. 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 So let's go back. We're gonna to begin to take each one. I need one. Someone to read the black and I'll fill in the red. Amen. This time is separated so it's easier to follow. Amen. Mm -hmm. So verses one and two. In this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately, I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Amen. John hears the voice of Jesus. And we got that reference when you look at Revelations chapter one, verses 10 through 11. Can someone get Revelations chapter one, read 10 and 11? Anyone? The four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their own crowns before the throne saying, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Is that chapter one? Yeah. No, that's chapter four. No, that's not oh, chapter Lord. one. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, that's not right. Chap Good that's, if you're right, it's not right. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I got it. I need chapter <laughs> one, verses 10 and 11. Amen. Chapter one, uh, verses 10 and 11. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, 
write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Dateria, and unto Tardis, Sardis, and hey, unto... Man, you, and you can stop right there. Okay. And the point I was trying to make is that trumpet is the voice of God, Jesus, when he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. So John heard the voice of Jesus, and he began to write this after writing to the seven churches, which we talked about in chapters one and two. John experienced that this, what we as true believers will experience at the moment that we're raptured, will be before God. Now, John is involved in what takes place hereafter or in the future, okay? A new day for mankind is about to begin, or is about to dawn, especially for us as believers, amen. Amen. So he heard amen. the voice of Christ, and he began to write after he wrote to the seven churches, from what he received from Jesus Christ, the voice of the trumpet. Verse three, anyone? And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby, a rainbow that sh shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Amen. And I found the picture I thought that would probably, um, that would probably be a good representation of how the artist saw it, you know, as him who sat on the throne was encompassed by a rainbow, <clears throat> and he had the 24 elders and the four beasts surrounding him. Just an imagery, but this was a good um, image of what that may look like. Um, this proclaims the glory of God, which is beyond human comprehension. <clears throat> you can go to YouTube and people who have died and have had um, after death experiences. Mm -hmm. They say some of the colors they can't even describe. Mm -hmm. See, we're limited by this physical body. And only God knows. He said, Your heart, you said, Your minds can't even begin to understand what I have prepared for you. Because mm -hmm. our minds are finite and we just can't even begin to imagine what God has for us who are faithful. Some scholars believe the rainbow around God's throne is probably the same one he set in the sky after the flood. And we can find that in Genesis 9, 11 through 15, that he promised that he would never flood the earth again. But the next time he brings judgment to the earth, he's going to bring fire. Mm -hmm. See, the rainbow was God's token to Noah that he would never again destroy the earth in such a manner. But how many know Satan always copies God's for destruction's purposes? Yes. So the LGBTQ, the alphabet community, we call them, have so-called hijacked the rainbow. Yes. They call it for pride. Mm. Mm. How many know that is mm. diametrically opposed to everything God is? Amen. Yes. Mm. And, and the world celebrates that. My God. Mm -hmm. But the rainbow symbolizes God's covenant. Mm -hmm. How many know God is a covenant keeper? Yes. Yes, he is. God keeps his covenant. No matter how many times Israel backslid, no matter how many times you have strayed. Mm -hmm. Even when we're not faithful, I know someone who is faithful to us. Mm -hmm. God is a covenant keeper. How many of us are thankful that God is not like us? Oh, I'm yes. grateful. I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Grateful and thankful. Amen. Grateful <laughs> and and thankful. Oh, I'm so thankful that he's not like me. The first sign of trouble, most folks will turn their backs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but God says, despite I'm going to, he swore by himself. He couldn't find anything greater to swear by. He said, I'm going to keep a covenant with you. I swear by myself, mm -hmm. my Lord. Amen. Amen.
verse four someone can someone read verse four and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold amen crowns of gold 24 lesser thrones out the amplified greek means rendering okay um throughout the new testament elders are leaders set in the church we have elders in our churches today folks who have been set aside to do um the teaching and leading of the church some scholars believe these elders represent the entirety of the work of God with a mixture of prophets and apostles. What was the job of the, in the Old Testament, we had prophets, right? We had Isaiah, Daniel, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Obadiah, Ezekiel, Micah, Jonah, now go on. What was the job of the prophet in the Old Testament predominantly? What did that prophet do? Uh, I believe that they um, they heard from God. Yeah, then they uh, the mouthpiece for God. Yeah, yeah, they was like mouthpiece for God. They they um, told um, usually told the king what God want them to know. So was they it were always messengers. Good? They were like was yeah, always, like was good news messengers. Most of the time? No, it wasn't always good, but it still had to yeah. be done. So the it prophets be said and it had to be done. Amen. Like they said, the prophets were the mouthpiece for God. Mm -hmm. They spoke about repentance because oftentimes Israel was strained. <laughs> they were an idolatrous nation. So the prophets were God's mouthpiece telling them get back on track. Right. They, they also were um we call op um, um, how is it? Um, apostolic. Not apostolic. No. Um, ap end times. I can't get the word out. Um, apostolic. 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 Um, you got it. It's, it's that I can't get it off my tongue. Um, ap end time prophecies. Right. It'll come to me. My, my tongue is just tied. I can't get the word off um, <laughs> off my tongue. But um, they were end time. They spoke of end time things to come. Whether it, I'm um, speaking of the coming up. Is that against the branch? I mean, Sister Davis. Apocalypse. 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 There you go. Apocalypse. Apocalypse. And oftentimes they will speak about things, whether it was related to the book of Revelations, right? Or they would speak about the coming of Christ. Like Ezekiel spoke a lot about apocalyptic stuff, right? Daniel also, apocalypse. Isaiah was a mixture yeah. of apocalyptic and the coming of Christ. Okay. So they spoke of a lot of foretelling of a lot of futuristic events. And also they called the nations to repent. What was the apostle? What is an apostle? The apostle. What was that, Reverend Brand Minister Branch? Sent one. I can't. He said sent one. Yeah. How many apostles do we have in the New Testament? Twelve. Twelve. One of them would um, betray Christ, so we had to get another one. Um, I think of Thaddeus, right? Thaddeus. And then we have Apostle Paul. A lot of people, they contend, a lot of times he was contested about his apostleship. They said, you didn't walk with Christ. But he said, no, I saw Christ in his form. No, he saw Christ. He experienced yes, Christ he for himself. He saw right. him visually. Right, but he was Part of the apostle. Say that again? Barnabas and Barnabas, yeah. So, oftentimes they were challenged because they were like, "Well, you didn't walk with Christ," but obviously we know Christ called them, and they did see Christ in his in his true form. So, there are some folks who believe that the twenty four elders could be some one person from each tribe of the twelve tribes of Israel mm -hmm. and the twelve apostles. Some believe they're a mixture. The Bible doesn't really tell us. It just says 12, 24 elders. But if you study the scriptures, you could try to try to get an idea um, that they may be a mixture of prophets and apostles. And many of 
And many of these apostles and prophets, they were killed. Yeah. They were killed. You know. Does that mean they was mortars? Martyrs. They were mortars. Yeah, martyrs. they were mortars. You know, and I and, and, and mean, and, and they were martyrs for the gospel, for Christ's sake. But they knew that they that beyond his flesh, they had a greater reward. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And oftentimes it's their death, especially in the New Testament. You know, they capture you and they say, Hey, we're going to um to Peter, we're going to crucify you upside down. Now, if Peter didn't know Jesus for who he was, mm -hmm. would you have let would you have wanted to go and die that way? No, 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 if yeah. I didn't know who Jesus was, I probably they died terrible deaths, mm -hmm. stoned mm -hmm. to death, beheaded, <laughs> crucified upside down. John, who wrote this, was banned to the island of Patmos, but they knew something, <laughs> they experienced something, mm -hmm. able to relate. They knew Christ Jesus, so they was willing to die. So, the devil thought that he can destroy the work of the church by killing off the apostles all it did was spread the gospel like a wildfire because mm -hmm. man you would go to death so this must be true <sighs> amen amen i think it i think because they had seen jesus when he after he died the third day he came he arrived again and he spent time with them about 40 days they 40 days yeah. so they know they know to know to know to know they know <laughs> they know they walked with them they, they saw the risen savior so mm -hmm. they were willing to go to the grave they were willing to go to the grave yeah mm -hmm. they were willing to go to the grave because they experienced christ in his resurrection right. and there was nothing that the people the 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 those nations could do to turn them back they knew Wow. And how many God said, and y'all haven't seen me yet. No. <laughs> and you still believe. So you have a great reward. Blessed are those. Yeah, we know what God Blessed can do. We know what Jesus can do. <laughs> you know? So the 24 elders were leaders of God's children on earth. And the white raiment, it, it represents the righteousness of Christ. Okay? And the crowns indicate that the elders are righteous and extremely victorious. How many know you're victorious in Christ Jesus? Amen. Amen. How many know you have a crown waiting for you with a name, with a new name? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Possibly many of these elders were killed for the work of Christ, but Jesus, but they were honored by God. So the world thought they was destroying them, <laughs> but God was uplifting them. I mean, no, God's ways are not our ways. Exactly. Hallelujah. Thank him for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, verse five, I just want to read verse five. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of god amen the seven lamps are the seven spirits of god now let me be clear there is only one spirit but he manifests and operates in many different ways the holy spirit now we go to isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 and the spirit of the lord one shall rest upon me the spirit of wisdom, wisdom. understanding the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. These are the one Holy Spirit manifesting in seven different ways. Amen. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, understanding spirit of counsel, spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, seven spirit of knowledge and of the, and the and fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. That's I'll pull that exactly right from it. Yeah, I, I see it. I just want to mark it. 
Okay, Isaiah absolutely. 11. Let me see. So Isaiah 11 and 2. What we call it. Right. Isaiah, what we call an Sister Branch, Sister Davis, help me out one more time. Apocalyptic. 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 I can't get it out for some reason. Apocalyptic was writing about the Holy Spirit. And how many know in the Old Testament, not everyone got the Holy Spirit? He fell out on certain folks. But in New Testament, he was given to us as the comforter. So anybody who calls on the name of Christ receives the Holy Spirit. Seven denotes perfection, the totality and the universality of the Holy Spirit. This reveals that the Holy Spirit is before God's throne, indicating that his work on earth and behalf of the church is gloriously included the holy spirit's job has been to build a group of believers a true church and a company of born again people that's why jesus said i must go but i'm going to send you a comforter hmm. and the and by this time the church has been taken up to heaven and we talked about that we talked about some people believe in pre-trip mid-trip Post trip, and we'll get more into that as we get further into this. But for us, for me, I believe the Bible clearly speaks that we are pre trib We're not going to experience the rap, the um, the um, tribulation. We'll be raptured up. We'll be caught up. Amen. But Amen. some folks, there's some thoughts that think they be the church gets caught up midway into the tribulation and some people the church goes through the whole thing but the bible god told philadelphia i'm not going to point you to wrath he tells philadelphia i'm not gonna point you to wrath and there's another scripture i believe in corinthians that god has not appointed us to wrath that's why we mentioned how can god call us the bride of christ but makes you go through hell and high water to be with him <laughs> but to those who deny him yeah, you're going to go through hell and high water. And if you could stand that, then you'll be saved. But if you can't run with the horsemen, make like, like, like who said that? Um, is it Jeremiah, Isaiah? One of, if you can't run with the footmen, what makes you think you're going to run with the horsemen? Mm. A question. Yes, ma'am. Do you think uh, once we are raptured, the people left? behind do you think they know that that it was from god sister branch that's a good point anybody anybody want to try me what do you think what do y'all think the people when this church is raptured we think the world how the world is going to react they're going to be shocked they're going to be surprised they're going to be confused because the unbelievers is not going to know what is going on and then you have the ones who are lukewarm <laughs> They're going to be the ones that be like, oh my gosh, I missed it. I should have, I should have been straddling the fence. And then Is you're it, gonna have the other ones, there? then you're gonna have the other ones who thought that they was walking with God, talking the way he speaks, and they thought they 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 thought they were there, and yeah. they actually weren't. So they're gonna be mad and yeah. confused. I don't, think they be, I don't think they'd be mad. I think they'd be, like I said before, it would be more preachers. And I know yeah. folks would be like, if you knew all this, why are you still here? Yeah. He didn't believe. You didn't believe. Didn't believe. It's, it's not that they didn't believe. They was probably. They didn't believe. They, they yeah, believe. They saying one thing and doing another. <laughs> they didn't I mean, believe. Yeah, they, they Not didn't leaving. Believe. Okay. They didn't believe okay. this down here. He didn't believe. Okay. If you're a believer, you won't be left here. Like Minister Brand said, if you are a believer, you won't be here. Now, if you're an unbeliever who says he believes, or you would call an actor, yeah. a fake. The unsaved world is just going to explain it away. Like and, they always do. And 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 right now, I believe they're setting the stage because they're talking a lot about UFOs. It's, yeah, you gotta pay attention yeah. to this stuff. They're talking about AI, UFOs. Uh, so when it happens, they're gonna explain it away, mm -hmm. and the world won't believe. Oh, they was they were caught up by UFOs. 
something. I don't care. I just want to make sure I'm not here. Amen. 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 Verse six, I mean, verse five continued. And, and get out of the throne. Someone read that again. We're going to read that. We still got some more to talk about. And out of the throne proceed lightning and thundering and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Amen. God is accessible through Jesus only after the Holy Spirit draws a person to him. We have to be drawn to God. This does not mean that God would not be working on earth through the tribulation period. On the contrary, but the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, he deals directly at this time with the nation of Israel. And you can find that in Ezekiel 26, 36. Okay, we'll look at that later. But do you read, the, I would, I'll ask you to read all Ezekiel 36, how he talks to the nation of Israel during this apocalyptic time. Additionally, a number of Gentiles also are saved in the tribulation. Can someone briefly get Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, and read that? Again, apocalyptic ministry. Zechariah 8, 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Amen. So the Gentiles are like, we, some folks, we're going with you. Just like, uh, who was the, um, was it Naomi? Mm hmm What was her daughter her daughter-in-law's name? Ruth. Yeah. Ruth. Yeah. I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. Naomi's like, go back to your homeland. I'm, I'm, I'm my both of my sons are dead. And Ruth like, I'm going with you. So these Gentiles, like, hey, we heard about your God. <laughs> and we're going with you. And the work of the Holy Spirit on earth continues throughout. The tribulation period. God is in total control. There are some folks think that God's going to be totally. Everything is under God's control. Everything. Someone get Joel chapter two, and read verses twenty eight through thirty two. Joel chapter two verses twenty eight through thirty two. That's one of the, we call the minor prophets because of the size of his book, not because of his ministry. A lot of folks think they have a smaller book that they are not as significant. No, they just had a smaller writing, but all prophets are major. They just have a minor as far as size of their writings. Joel, Joel chapter two, verses, chapter? Joel. Joel chapter two, verses 28 through 32. 28. Jesus chapter two, verses 28 through 32. Okay. I, and it should come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Mm. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. your, your old men shall dream dreams. Young, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the service, upon the handmaid, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Amen. Blood and fire and pillar of smoke. The sun should be turned in darkness and a moon into blood before mm. the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Of the Lord. And Understand, it, right there. Is that 32, yeah. Sister Branch? That's 31. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. And it shall come to pass that who, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For Amen. in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be de deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the raiment whom the Lord shall call. Amen. Who else quoted that scripture? Um, where he said, I will pull out my flesh, my spirit upon all flesh, and your your your, your daughters and sons shall prophesy. Jesus. Jesus. No, no. Joe. Joe. Who else said that? Same scripture. Who else wrote that? 
in oh. Acts. Paul. Oh, in Peter. Acts. Peter. 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 I think it's Acts chapter two. Peter uh -huh. said, this is the time when the Holy Spirit fell. He said, this is the time that Joel spoke about, right? I'm eating Joel. Acts chapter two. It's in two or three, one of them. But um, Peter mentioned that, that this is that time when the Holy Spirit fell on him, right? But then Joel goes on and talks about, when you read in, I think, chapter 31, the blood, the moon, and all these different signs. You see how... Joel, you, he just said that. Go ahead, Sister Davis. I yeah, said, I see it. It's 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 said that too uh, in Acts mm -hmm. 2 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness mm -hmm. and the moon into blood. You said Acts chapter 2? But it's, it's, it's start, my brother, but it started the, the 17th. Acts 7. It started. Yeah, it does. Acts, what chapter? Acts 2 17. Uh -huh. Yep. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Where Peter mentioned he referred to Job. But Job goes on and goes further into the apocalyptic because we haven't seen a blood moon. We haven't seen no. these things he fought, but he was talking, he was going from one dispensation of time to further to revelations. So the whole point of the matter is this God is still in control. So, mm -hmm. question. Question. Mm -hmm. In light of the wildfire from Canada mm -hmm. and what New York went through, someone captured the color of the moon, blood red. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, it was swarms of bees throughout the city. Okay. And then I think previous before that, they had some type of floodwaters going on. Okay. So All they signs. What do you think? All signs. Okay. I'm, I'm from, me, I, from I'm, what I understand, New York is the what they call the new Sodom and Gomorrah. No, well, people say a lot of stuff. That's, that's what they say. Yeah. But I mean, that may be a precursor of what's to come. Okay. Okay. But as we get further into Revelations, there's some things that God reveals that make sure, okay, and some folks like, is this symbolic? Or is this real? And we'll talk about that. Okay. okay. But that may be like a precursor, okay? Of what's to come. What's to come. Mm -hmm. I but, agree. But <laughs> without what I'm trying, the whole verse five, what I'm trying to convey here is that God is in full control. And now some folks believe that God, when he's, when the rapture comes, he just takes hands off the earth. No, he's going to yeah. deal with Israel. He's going to strictly deal with Israel in that time. We'll be gone. He's going to deal with the nation of Israel. And we'll get more into that as we talk about the 144 and so forth. Okay. Amen. 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 Verse six. Can someone read verse six? And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about in the throne were four beasts. Of eyes before mm. and look now, at is this that symbolic? That's them. No, that's the picture. That's I mean, is that really a beast? He didn't say he said there were four beasts, right? Mm -hmm. was, one had a head of an eagle, like an eagle, one had a head like a man, one had a head like a, a calf, and one had a head like a lion, and they were full of eyes and had four wings. Oh, and they constantly said, Holy, holy. Holy. This is what he saw. Oh, and that's just a picture of what it may look like. It, it, it's like something we've never seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah George, George said that they were angels. It could. It says four beasts. It could be. But they stood before the throne of God. And they constantly cried out, Holy, holy, holy. They have wings. Well, yeah, they got wings, but I don't think they were angels, though. I think they they was bees. <laughs> I don't and, 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 I, don't and look, know. I, I just don't think they was angels. I thought angels supposed to reference be. Isaiah 6 2. They had six wings. That's a good point. Yeah, we can look at that. Yeah. But they at the, at the end of the day, they stand before the throne of God. 
the cherubs. And cherubs. they're constantly saying, holy, holy, holy. holy. And a sea of glass was like unto crystal. Mm. The word, the word sea, when using the word sea, not sea, when using scripture, often without reference to a specific body of water, oftentimes refers to a group of people. Okay, mm -hmm. crystal is symbolic of the right standing before God or holiness. The crystal sea is symbolic of the church and the Old Testament's righteousness. This is introducing creatures we have no knowledge and which are beyond our human comprehension as so much in heaven actually is. Man, God, some things in heaven that's probably, if we saw in our flesh, it would blow our minds. But think about this. I was talking to my cousin early about this. And we was like, man, could you imagine seeing a beast like this? I said, it would probably turn you to stone. <laughs> you know, you would, you'd be so terrified. You would freeze to death, right? <laughs> because this is just mind-blowing. But think, think about this. They got all these eyes. And they these powerful, whether cherubims, angels, four beasts. They are floating around before the throne of God saying, holy, holy, holy. We will be frozen if we saw something like this walk in your backyard. Oh, yeah. We probably die. Frozen, right. heart attack, urinate yourself. You're you would, you would, you would, you would die of fear. You probably would die of fear. You probably would die of fear. Most of yeah. you probably have died of fear. You're right. Because I know if I saw something like that. I you saw a lion come up, your heart would almost stop. Yeah. Or a bear, grizzly bear. Your heart would freeze. Or, or or a pit bull or a pit bull not on a leash. I had a friend of mine who had a Rockweller and he jumped the fence and ran up on me. Man, I was terrified. <laughs> that, but that reminded me of me and my granddaughter was coming outside and we were standing there talking and a bee landed on my shoulder and mm. my granddaughter started screaming and running. I passed her. <laughs> See? And, and, and the point I want to make here, how, how do they react when they look upon God? Mm. Can you imagine how powerful God must be? That all they do is say, holy, holy, holy. Which one? It's the love. I think it's the love. They love him so much. The love is the... Love. Is this the rev the reverence of how powerful God really is? When the church is caught up away, it will be the church that's going to go up to heaven is going to be without spot or wrinkle, wrinkle or anything, but holy without blemish. And that's found in Ephesians 5:27. So what does that mean? Anybody? What does that mean, a church that's without spot, wrinkle, or blemish? Perfect. The perfect church. I believe people that love the Lord, that yeah. really, truly loves the Lord. Man, this is the branch. I wish I was there. I would give you $20 if I had it. <laughs> because this scripture come up, I remember it came up one day like, how? Oh. I mean, because she's looking at, like all of us, none of us are perfect. We we all wrinkle. We all got stuff. I'm like, do you have faith? That's all God requires. Total faith in Him. So is that what that means? Without spot. So when you are totally, a, when you are like Minister Brand said, a believer, and you put your total trust and faith in Christ Jesus. And you're walking this thing out. When you're actually living this word, I'm not saying you perfect, we all have sinned, whether it be thought or deed, there are times you're going to fall short. Amen? Amen. Amen. But if you're walking this out and you're not an imposter, And you like minister, like Sister Brand said, you really love the Lord. Absolutely. You really He knows his own. And you're gonna be with him. 
And I like to say by grace, you have been saved through faith. By grace, through mm -hmm. faith, Ephesians chapter two, verses seven through eight. Mm -hmm. Let name by works, nobody can boast. Nobody can boast. I can't say, well, you know, since Davis, I get I get a, a feather in my head from God because I'm teaching this Bible study tonight. <laughs> so I work because I am saved. Now, right. I'm gonna get, I'm, I, if I'm doing this with a pure heart, which I believe I am, I'm going to get rewarded for my works. But it's not for my salvation. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse Praise seven through nine, someone. As we can really close out, verses seven through nine. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, <clears throat> and the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, mm -hmm. which was and is and is to come. Yeah. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. The Amen. four and you, can stop, you can stop right there, verse nine. And okay. then you pick up. Um, we'll pick up on um, the next 11, 10, 11, the next slide. These strange creatures are before the throne constantly. Full of eyes signifying the revealing of their innermost nature and being. They all seen. These are spirits and not flesh. And they use a threefold repetition called attention to the infinite holiness of God. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Mm -hmm. They're giving total reverence to the one who sits on the throne. Amen. 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 And Sister who's Davis. Sitting can, on the throne? Hey, who's sitting on the throne? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. 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 Is it? Yeah. It gotta be Jesus. Yeah. Well, wait a minute now. Okay, okay, okay. It is. No, the, right no, the, the Jesus is on the right hand of the throne, right? So that must be God. Well, God and Jesus are the same. They're the same. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're yes, one. They are. There's three that we call the triune. Three right. personalities, but one God. One God. The, one uh, the Father, God, said. the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Notice the word God before all of them. Because why he did is God, God. But then why do God put him on the right hand of the throne? So who's sitting on the throne? Both of them can't sit on the throne. If God put him, um, Jesus, on the right hand of God, there must be, um, God must be on the throne. And Jesus is the Son of God. And he sits on the right hand of the throne. He didn't say he sit on the throne. He said he sit on the right hand of the throne. So that gotta be God himself. Okay. Look at chapter well, they're five. They're all seven. equal in the Godhead. <laughs> yeah, they we're all not, equal. We're not disputing that. We, we, they all equal. Not disputing but he did, but he did say. If, if, if Jesus is on the throne, He's going to take the book from he who's on the throne. Read chapter five, verse one. So y'all getting ahead. Y'all getting ahead. Y'all getting ahead. We're not getting ahead. We're dealing with verse eight <laughs> in chapter four that you skip. Which one I skip? Verse eight. Verse eight. And the four beach had each of right six, there. six wings and saying four eyes with them. They rest of they rest not day and night, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Okay. I mean, there's, 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 there's a group that believes that all of this is Jesus, and then there's those who don't believe that because it doesn't show that. Verse 5, you know, is the opposite of what you're saying. 
just read it and you'll see. He can you can't go back to verse five? On, can't be sitting on the throne and then take the book out of That's him by the hand of him who's on the throne. It's right there in chapter five. They can't be the same. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thundering and voices, mm -hmm. and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So you have the seven look candles. The, look at look at the image I put up here. Let me read chapter five, verse six, and through eight. Uh, before we then go I, there, you'll right see what I'm talking. You'll see but what before, I'm talking. But before about. we go there, it's no, related. No, wait, wait. It's related. But look, it's look related. at the image I put up there. What do you see? You see seven okay. candles. You see seven burning lamps, which represents right. what? The spirits of God. Then what's behind that candle? The Lion of Judah. The Lamb. The, la the, the lamb. lamb. Oh, it looks like the Lion. The, okay. The little then thing. What's behind that? Oh, the, the lamb. lamb. And then above that is the Lion, the lion. of Judah. Of Judah. See well, you know, yeah. Let me look at Judah. I can't see it. <laughs> I rather can't see it. The seven candles. Okay. And go ahead, Minister Brandon. Read verse <laughs> six. Read verse six. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Keep reading. And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast like a calf, which was depicted in the slides before. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of eyes within. And the rest not, and they rest not day and night saying, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. That is. Go ahead. That, that, that was May verse I read nine. something too? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Brandt. Appreciate it. Chapter five, verse six. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the hand of him that sat on the throne. Sounds like two people, don't it? And he had taken, and when he had taken the book, the four, the li living creatures and the four twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which was the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, "Worthy are you to take the book and break the seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with the blood of men, from the tribe and tongue of people and nation." So it's saying there that the one on the throne is not the same one that took the book because the one on the throne had the book. What chapter did you read from? Chapter five, the next chapter. And I said, you got ahead of me. I'm ref. <laughs> look, look, scripture, scripture. We're we, we going to get there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm not ahead of you. Scripture, you compare scripture with scripture. Oh, I get I'm that. I'm sure you know that. And that's all that. I'm doing. Oh, I'm saying you and that's right. State, and all I'm saying is chapter four and chapter five are related. They are. That's and I'm saying, I'm saying that's why I wanted the discussion. But I'm saying we're gonna be there next week. But he's right. 
That's why I said you're going ahead of me. Well, that's what I no, thought. I'm not but... going ahead of you. You skipped the verse. And all I'm saying. No, he actually saying did is, not skip the verse. He, he did go read verse. He just eight, read one. the verse. That's it. And I'm saying, and I asked, who's on the throne? That's all I said. Amen. And we got our answer. Who's on the throne? And we have our answer. Which is God. <laughs> okay okay that's how i see it because god he always he on, always said the father is on the throne the father jesus is on the right, right hand, hand. the, the son, seven spirits is the holy spirit holy spirit is before the throne that's what right. the book says so is that i'm not i'm not i'm not a, uh coming up with my own idea it's right here i'm just i just said what it says amen, amen. if you look at chapter one verse four it starts off with a greeting. Starts off with he who is and was and was and then it's and then it says and from the seven spirits and then it says and from Jesus Christ. So it's not Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. That doesn't make sense because when you start off in verse one, it says the revelation came from God, which is a Trinity. The triune. Let us make, make man, man in, in our, our in, in our image. Amen. All right. But good discussion. <laughs> good discussion. And we're gonna be in chapter five next week. Amen. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think that God is show, that this is a vision of God's throne and of the scroll and the lamb. That's what that is. I think. <laughs> okay. Because wow. God and Christ, they both they are in they're 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 in control of all the human and su supernatural events. And this is what this 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 verse, this verse chapter four is is telling us. You think? Well, it's showing us what's it saying again? I didn't hear that. I can't say it no more. <laughs> <laughs> good discussion. Though. But it's a very confusing because um, when I first read Revelation, when, this, when it was talking about the eagles, I thought that was United States. Yeah, the difficulty, <laughs> I think, with the book of Revelation. The difficulty, I find, with the book of Revelation. Yeah, you know, it's that, eagles. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Well, that's what I thought. You hey, know, look, I said, that's why we're here to learn, right? Yeah, we're because they said the United States was eagles, right? So I thought it was symbolic. So I thought it couldn't be no beast looking like that in heaven. Mm. It be because I because I just can't can't see that. I just can't see looking hey. at something like that. You know. Okay. Well, let's finish with verse ten and eleven because we're a few minutes over. So I'm gonna read ten and eleven. But good, great, great discussion. Verses ten and eleven. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O God, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for these pleasures they are and were created. Amen. They are and were created. The 24 elders, again, represent the church of the living God and heaven proclaims the church on earth, how the church on earth ought to be. It presents the acknowledgement of their royal estate as all comes from God. Everything comes from God. Unless the Lord's worth is fully sensed by the believer and worshiper, one's own unworthiness will never be realized. So in effect, the praise of these 24 elders tells us that the creation, and that means every part of the creation is going to be completely restored and all because of what Christ Jesus did on the cross. Amen. 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 All because what he did on the cross. Amen. 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 Wow. So homework. Uh -oh. Homework. <laughs> <laughs>
chapter 5. As we continue to dissect the book of Revelation. Amen. 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 So um any um parting questions, thoughts, concerns as we go in as we before we close out in prayer, and next week we'll be going into um chapter five of the book of Revelation. My my question was um so Jesus was like a vessel um for God. He said I forget what chapter he said, a body I prepared for you. Um, but where's that at? Um Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. But Jesus is God. But he was God manifested in the flesh. And I forget what boy, he said, a, a body I prepared for you. So that body was prepared. That mm. body was prepared to endure the cross. That body was prepared to take 30, what, lashes and be crucified. And that body was designed to be resurrected again. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 10 and 5. You saying his body is different from ours? Yeah. You, you, yeah. Let him answer the question. Yes. You can't carry that cross and go through what he went through and, and live. The Bible says a body I prepared. God prepared that body to go through what it went through. I, I think that's a little more than what it says. No, because no, I'm going to talk. I mean, like, that body. I hear, was what, you, I hear, I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but he wasn't the only one that got forty lashes and was crucified and out and lived it. Who resurrected again outside of Christ? No, I'm not talking about that. You no, say that body resurrected body was, from the grave. That body was resurrected. That body resurrected from the grave. Yeah, no one else. Even though other people had took the same punishment he did, none of those other people was resurrected. So his body was prepared for that. He was to prepare the living sacrifice for us. And the verses you're talking about is in Hebrews um, chapter 10, mm -hmm. verses 5 through 7. And read it for me. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Amen. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Verse 7, it says, Then said I, lo, I come, and the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I know my body couldn't withstand that. And my Not body, my, when my body goes to the girth, it's going to the dust. And it would, it, it would be, and when I be re, when when I'm resurrected from the grave, I'm gonna have a new body. Yeah, because I mean, because Mary was a spirit came into Mary. Not a man. So that's why I believe that Jesus was different because a spirit came into Mary, and that spirit was of God. Mary was impregnated by who? God. Holy Spirit. Spirit the Holy Spirit. A spirit. I was impregnated. So that made him different too. I was impregnated by Rodney Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised by my dad, Raymond Thomas Jr. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but good discussion. This is what Bible study is all about. Uh, it is. We just yeah. sec, it's not to um argue debate, but it's the breakdown of scripture. And folks who are not here, man, they miss yes. the richness of the word of God because you can't get this from a sermon. I'm sorry. No, you, you can't. can't. You can't. But you can't get a discussion like this. And we can learn together. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. It was beautiful. 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 So chapter five is our homework as we continue to dissect the word of God. Amen. Amen. And, and understand is, as we go through revelations and I'm going to do my best, there are different viewpoints. Some yeah. folks say that's symbolic. Some person that know that's, that's, that's real. So, mm -hmm. uh, so there's different viewpoints 
of certain things throughout the book of Revelation that many scholars to this day debate over, okay? Yeah, and, they do. And all yes, we sir. understand that, you know what I mean? But one thing we all understand and one thing we were not going to debate of, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 So Amen. with that, I'm going to ask um, Minister Brant, Yolanda, if you don't mind um, praying us out for tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. His hearts and minds are clear. Father God, we come to you, Father God, boldly before your throne of grace and humbly before your throne of grace, Lord God, thanking you for this Bible study, Father God, thanking you for the discussion, Father God, that will be cleared up hopefully in the next Bible study in chapter five, Revelations, Father God. But Father God, I just, I just want you to look after everyone here Hallelujah. that is yes. in Bible study, in this Bible Hallelujah. place, Father God. You, As they lay down for the night, Father God, yes, I ask Lord. that you watch over them and protect them from any seen or unseen, hurt, harm, or danger, Father God. Blast all the fiery darts that Satan may have ready to aim and fire at them, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Father God, oh, may Lord. they walk oh. around the traps and the snares that yes. Satan has left yes. for us yes. to walk through, Father God, because he is angry because we are learning you, your word, and everything word. there is about you, Father God. And yes. his yes. job is to kill, steal, and destroy. But he's yes. also going to and from the earth seeing whom he can devour, Father God. Yes. Every soul that he is trying to get is counting, Father God but not the souls which are, are you, Father God, because your spirit dwells in us, Father God. So may we continue to dwell in the secret place of the almighty God, Father God, almighty and that God. will be you. We thank you, Father God, for the things that you have done for us, the things that you are doing right now. And we thank you in advance for the things that, that you will be doing for us, Father God. And if there's anyone whom I miss, Father God, please bless them in a mighty way. And watch way. over us once again as we sleep and slumber, Father God. And if there's any doubts, Father God, I ask that the Spirit of the Lord, not doubts, but questions, Father God, or confusion, I ask that the Spirit of the Lord clear everything up, Father God. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Lord willing, I'll see you on Sunday. And Go back and read chapter four. I'll ask you all, go back and read one through four and get into five. And let's continue to go back. And if we have to go back over some stuff, that's what we're going to do. But Amen. We'll Amen. 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 Bye, Amen. Bye. Amen.